Welcome. welcome, welcome, welcome. We're glad you can join us to the sound of Daniel Barber's drums as we spent so much time with those drums at our gathering uh, two weeks ago at Cape Cod for Creation Spirituality Communities. And uh, we know we changed the time on you because most of us were still traveling back from the uh, from the gathering when we had our usual time to meet. So thank you for coming today instead. And welcome to Global Kinship, Exploring the Evolving Noosphere. We are a monthly webinar series sponsored by Creation Spirituality Communities. My name is Gail Ransom, and I join Bob Eisenberger and Penny Andrews on a three-person team to bring you these monthly explorations on the emerging collective human consciousness, what Pierre Deschardins called the Noosphere. Today, we are bringing you some of the ideas that were germinated at the recent Creation Spirituality Communities gathering. There will be four of us who share how the gathering has affected our own thinking and actions. Penny Andrews, myself, Gail Ransom, and two artists that were in residence at the gathering, Daniel Barber, who you just heard, and Imogene Drummond, who you will soon meet if you don't know her already. They will be here and presenting their ideas. After that, after that, um, We'll be talking and uh, sorry, is my phone rang? Sorry, okay. So, uh, since we began hardly a year ago, when hardly anyone had heard of the noosphere, many words and efforts have been emerged to and expand the capacity of human beings to live in positivity, community, and love. Some speak of a new humanity, and that's how we titled the gathering. Many speak of staying hopeful, and we talked about the is there hope for the new humanity, even as the energy in our planet shifts? Welcome to the conversation. We're glad you're here. Thanks, Gail. It's my opportunity for any uh, uh, tech notes. I think most of you have been with us before, so you're quite aware. We ask that you re remain muted um, unless uh, you're speaking to ask a question or make a comment. Um, and also, uh, if you do uh, have a question, we ask that you raise your hand. Now, the, an interesting little twist. When I ran a session on Sunday, the latest update of Zoom had moved the raise hand icon directly onto the Zoom toolbar. You'll recall that in the past, we've always had to click the reaction button or react as it is on my system. Um, uh, so you'll have to investigate your own system to see where you're going to find that, either on the Zoom toolbar itself or under the React button, and you're looking for the words raise hand. Uh, thanks very much. And um, uh, yeah, somebody was just trying it out, so it works. <laughs> uh, Penny has some opening words for us as well. Oh, oh, oh. Um, my apologies. Oops. Okay. Um, Ready? Ready. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's been an experience that is lingering. Um, it leaves sort of a soft smile on my face. And, and you'll hear a bit more why. Uh, but before we get going, I, someone who's not in the lineup, but we do hope to hear from today, is our beloved... Melder, Mel, our elder, our beloved Mel, elder. Um, he was very instrumental in making this weekend happen. And um, as such, he was covered in rose petals at one point uh, with love and affection for all that he's done for creation spirituality over the years. Uh, these, I'm, I'm recapping a few of my comments that opened the event um, because it set a context and it certainly speaks to why I, why this, this call to re reimagine humanity is so resonant with so many people today. We are walking a sacred path of uncertainty. Because of these Cenozoic eras ending and the next era emerging, this is a messy time that will become messier. 
We have the sixth mass extinction. We have meta crises. And we have a science that let go of whole systems in favor of siloed understandings of the universe. And as such, we have come to a place where we have an extractive understanding of how to be with our earth and our kin that are more than human. But we are called to come to a totally new understanding of who we are and how we fit. I think at this point, I'm going to um, ask Bob to cue up some words from Matthew Fox and his presentation. It's a six minute segment where he was asked by someone about Gaza. And, and he begins to tease out what via negativa and evil, how they are differentiated. And so we'll go there and then I'll, I'll share some more words after that segment is finished. Um, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, just I have an interest in trying to understand evil or violence, which is very difficult for me. And like, for example, just kind of a small scale in terms of Israel-Palestine, when uh, a human being is able to face a child and kill that child. So is that the, just the, the um, maximum of the via negativa? and or Auschwitz, of course, is a larger scale example. So your um, understanding of evil and, and, and how evil, you know, hurt people hurt people, how evil like that kind where you can look at uh, a child in the face and kill him um, or a baby, uh, which is happening in the Middle East right now, which breaks my heart the most. Um, and my own grandchildren who in a way to some degree buy that because they live in Jerusalem. So just your, your help with that would be uh, wonderful, Matt. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, well, first, we don't want to equate via negativa with evil. Um, via negativa is two things. It is the naming of our powers of stillness and emptiness and um, therefore contemplation or meditation, calming the reptilian brain is, is part of it. Um, and, um, it's, and like the scriptures say, the psalmist says, be still and learn that I am God. So that's a very positive dimension to the via negativa, learning to let go and to let be. The other dimension of via negativa is suffering and grief and loss. And obviously, uh, war, which you've just introduced there in its concrete expression at this moment in history, war in Ukraine and war in Gaza, is um, is a carrier of uh, loss, destruction, death, uh, um, folly, and all the rest. So, um, uh, but we don't want to say uh, that evil and the via negativa are the same thing. The via negativa is our response to silence, a practice of silence, and it is our response to suffering and to evil. Um, but so too is the via transformativa, where we do something about it, where we um, we ask the kind of questions you're asking, and um, and we try to restructure society and our and educated our politicians who make decisions about war and so forth um but but regarding evil you know traditionally one of the definitions of evil is privation of good and um that there's that's part of what evil is it's the lack of the goodness you see that's why i identify it with um well, the Hebrew uh, approach to uh, missing the bullseye and kind of saying is misdirected love, but also um, evil is, is the undoing of goodness, if you will. 
is the opposite of goodness. Although I, I think really the bad is the opposite of good. I'd even say that the opposite of evil is the sacred because evil operates in the realm of spirit. And we forget that, especially in our modern consciousness because modern consciousness doesn't recognize the realm of spirit. But one of the big lessons I learned about evil came from Buck Ghost Horse, a Lakota teacher who was on my faculty for years and a friend of mine. <clears throat> he told me one day in our tradition, fear is a door in the heart. Now that's the fourth chakra, isn't it? Fear is a door in the heart that lets evil spirits in. So that word evil spirits mm -hmm. is not in Western vocabulary anymore, but that's the other side to evil. Evil, to me, is not just the absence of good. It's also a force in itself, evil spirits. I think we don't have to call the evil spirits Beelzebub or Lucifer today. We have other names for them. Racism, sexism, militarism. These are spirits. They take over people's souls. And I know they're spirits because they keep going up. They don't die. They don't die. We die. They keep coming back, right? They're spirits. And they, they're smart. Evil is very smart. It doesn't walk around with a sign on his back saying, I'm evil. Well, we'll stop there. And that was day two, and it was part of the Via Negativa. He was actually asked to address Via ne the, the Via Negativa. And that is a segment of what he talked about. And it really, it really caught me because I was somebody who wasn't raised with a strong sense of evil at all. And um, so I'm still living with, with digesting his words, but, but it, it certainly gave me a lot to think about, especially how, you know, young innocent men can go off to war and, and end up, you know, doing horrible things. And that, so I'm in a new place with it because of that very segment. And this, this will be available. Um, we don't know quite how yet, but through CSC communities, both Brian Stock, Matt's talk, and then their combination. Um, but our weekend wasn't about the Via Negativa. It was about what what is a new humanity or what is it about? And um, in my opening remarks, I shared Ilya Prigozhin's words, when a complex system is far from equilibrium, small islands of coherence in a sea of chaos have the capacity to shift the entire system to a higher order. Now he was a scientist back in the 1900s, um, early, earlier 1900s, and um, studied chaos. And he begins to offer us this idea of patterning for how new eras come into being. So uh, I started with um, Einstein's very simple statement, there are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle, and the other is though it all is. And then I kind of went through the, the what we know that people a hundred years ago in this baby of a species we are as humans, that we are everything we know is the product of 13.8 billion years of evolution. And that the universe is creativity. And we, um, we will continue to uh, evolve, which is yet again, something just over a hundred years ago wasn't known. So we are so catching up to what 
more and more of us are beginning to understand as our unified story or our unified paradigm. Um, and Thomas Berry, prophet that he was, once said that, that the historical mission of our times is to reinvent the human at the species level with critical reflection by means of story and shared dream experience. And that has to do with visioning. So um, I'm going to let others speak and perhaps more will come to me um, as I listen, but we, we touched something, we tapped something that weekend. And I think part of it is this idea that, that we are, you know, the universe is 100% creativity and we are 100% universe in our lives. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Gail. Thank you, Penny. Yes, it, it was uh, an amazing sense of community that we that was experienced there. Something more gentle and most forgiving and ease as in as in any other gathering that I've been in. And one thing that both uh, Brian and Matthew wanted to talk about was the mysticism, kind of really explore the relationship between science and mysticism and see where they took them. And they kept on using the word the wow factor. I, I, I don't know where they got that, but the, the wow factor. And whenever we are filled with awe and say, wow, then those are moments that remedy our situation. That's what uh, Brian said. They remedy where we are right now and bring us back to that the wholeness and to the connection that, that we feel so drawn to as we feel drawn to expand and separate at the same time. So um, another um, word he uses for um, is beholding. They want to talk about beholding the universe. And that again is a, is a mystical approach. So whenever uh, you and I or anyone stands out on a, on a beautiful lake and looks out and beholds the lake, that is a mystical moment. You don't have to live in a little hut in the, in the woods all by yourself. You don't have to uh, spend your time only reading books. In fact, that might be the opposite of it. So we are doing that, I think, often. And whenever we do, it's part of the repairing of our uh, relationship to, to the all. So um, that, um, which seems to be necessary anyway to, to, to to tear apart because that's when we expand, that's what happens. And the interesting thing that uh, Brian did is that he talked about uh, the new story because that's the way we titled it. It was um, Reinventing Our Story, Hope for the New Humanity. That was our title. And so he took seriously that reinventing our story. And he went through the story that we've, I would assume most of us have heard many times, starting with the Big Bang, and then there's the foam, and then there's the atoms, and then there's the molecules, and then the foam goes out and makes clouds and it makes stars. And this is all 14 billion years ago. All this happened over 14 billion years. And the way, the way that um, Brian talked about it, it was like a snap of time. It was just a snap of time. Well, it started, it started with the Big Bang and then it foamed out. And then, and then there was heat and then the heat pulled it back in again and it foamed out again and pieces broke off. And then there were many, many clouds and then one became our solar system and here we are. And uh, I think that gave an immediacy to this story that we often often uh, hear that I think was a little was powerful for us and, and set us up in a, um, a new way of understanding who we are and where we are in the universe. And so I have a clip too. It's a shorter one, but I have a clip from Brian when he's talking about what that means for us. So thank you, Bob. No. Oh no? I've lost my controls. Hang on. Do, am I like I? I no, it's, it's 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 at my end here. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and. I've I've got it. You got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, now the next thing I want to say is the atoms, now go back to the cloud itself. Go back to the, cloud. the atoms are drifting through space and then they, they 
they they are attracted to each other uh that's what that's what moves the cloud you know from just a cold dark cloud moves it toward the creation of a solar system but i just wanted to point out one thing here einstein showed that gravity is not some force that's imposed on the universe and and forces the atoms to come together no einstein showed that the atoms themselves create the attraction this is one of the the important moments for reimagining our story we we've moved from like an abstract law out there called gravitation move from that to centers of activity that 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 dynamize action so matter itself you see is the source of the attraction that leads to the star okay thank you so as I can, we're talking about our own, own reactions. As I came, I was truly, truly involved with uh, Neil Faiz's idea that matter is only an illusion and that we are all just molecules who have agreed to be together and become our particular bodies. Or, um, and of course, a lamp here, it, it, it had its um, activity in that direction. That and I see as Matthew, uh, sorry, Brian talking about is that um, coming together and being attracted to each other, but we are still made out of the molecules that started at the at the Big Bang and right after it in, in the in that foam that that, that that was created. So that we are, um, we belong to each other much more than we ever think because we belong to each other because uh, we all come out of those same molecules. We're the same stuff. That's all the stuff there is. It's the stuff we're made out of. But uh, we also belong to each other because we've, we've lived these lives together and, and we've created this life, this kind of gossamer, gossamer existence uh, together. And we know this by uh, what it tells me is that um, the butterfly effect uh, is actually true actually happens as he just said there right there you change one thing with your hand where's my hand right you change one thing with your hand and other things begin to change the good news is that means we can have affect in this world and beyond right and so uh, another th way of thinking about it is when somebody picks you up on the phone and they call you and they say hey and i say oh i was just thinking about you you know, how many times has that happened to you? And this is kind of going across the, the, uh, the, the boundaries of the, to, to the spiritual boundaries to, um, to find uh, where we are uh, with each other. Uh, something that um, I was reminded of is the experiment with a cyclotron where they took a particle, split a particle, and they sent them in two different directions and did one. This is, this is a very lay way of uh, describing it, but they took one of them and it, um, it, um, and did something to it, so it changed. And they wait to see what's going to happen, the scientists. And it happens to the other one, just the same. So it's that same kind of butterfly effect. When we do one thing, we affect somebody else. Um, so I have some um, some some things to show you about that. I think my time's okay. Uh, if, Bob, if we can bring up the slides, my, here we are. The image that came to my uh, my uh, mind when I thought about everybody being connected to each other is the one let's see is there one before that that's the first one. really that's the first one. Oh, you know i don't, Henri matisse is too old to have a patent i don't know why i can't get his picture i onto my screen but anyway there, there they are there they are so this famous famous people picture of people dancing is kind of the way we are interconnected Right? We, we dance together, we're a little separate, but we all kind of reach together and, um, and make a reality and, and, and a, a community together. And then the next one, it reminds me kind of like these rubber bands or circles that happen in the, um, this is string theory, um, where as you can see different connections, because I would be at the, at the gathering and one person would say to me, you know, 
I ran into this person over there when I went to visit Niagara Falls and I had no idea that he used to go to the same school where my mother was a teacher. And or they'd be these kind of stories all the time. I think you can find some in your own life where you find magically, though there are billions of people in the world, you have a circle kind of like the Matisse dancers. That is your circle. So we'll try the next slide, Bob. Here, so this is this is string theory molecular designs. And again, I'm a lay person, but I just remember these images about how these circles work together. So it's deep down in us. This, 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 this is very natural to us. It's so natural to us that this is what we do when, as soon as we're able to walk. Do the next one, if you would. Yep, we start dancing in circles, right? Because, um, that's how we're made. We are expressing how we are on the subterranean level is, is exactly what these children are doing. And here is the same thing that we did. This is not from the gathering, but we did these dances at the gathering, um, which is in the next slide. People do circle dances. I, um, they're, um, and they feel good and they feel right. And um, that is part of dancing who we are. And 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 um, it's sharing our independence. So the final one, no, no, it's not the final one. Let's see. Then I have I have you. Let's skip that one and go to the to the one that looks a little bit like a purple snake. Because here we are. Now we've got all these little circles, but it's not just in one place in time. It's circles moving through time, if you can use your imagination. And this is again, it's a string theory image, so that um, that we together are floating in an, our uh, evolution from one one place to another, a kind of like twisting little spiral that uh, uh, which is very much like the last slide in a different way. Which is this is this is an image of the noosphere. I think it may be the image of an of of a um, of the internet, but the internet is the noosphere, and this kind of connecting that we do around our Earth. This is this is the um, this is what's happening. And you know, people pick up their phones. I do it the first thing in the morning. What's my family doing? What's my friends doing? We connect with each other. I know it has another side, which is a, a difficult uh, side. Which, separates us but there is something innate in us that wants to connect and here we are doing the impossible thing we are connecting around the world that reminds me of the next and final picture which is a james webb telescope image of the universe and some portion of it not the whole universe and there you have one to be eight eight different galaxies spinning in circles, more circle dances. So um, all of this makes me, thank you, Bob, all of that gives me great wonder. It's certainly the wow factor is alive. When I, I, when I look at each one of these slides and then I see them as a sequence, it's the, the wow factor of what we're living out right here in our lives is very powerful. And, um, myst and, and um, mysterious, and so that brings up the mystic as well, that um, there are scientific underpinnings to the wow factor that we're finding. Behold the universe, but also behold the molecules, behold the foam, behold the chaos, behold the cataclysm, behold all of it, because it um, it is, it is numinous to us and, and um, we are always often, not often, most people I would say are often dr drawn to the beauty and the positive. And then of course we've got that, that evil in there too, but it, um, the uh, way of changing it, the way of uh, remedying our situation, according to Brian Swim, is to say, wow. <laughs> to feel awe. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Hey, yep. Thank you, Gail, for, for making it almost impossible to speak now. <laughs> I'm supposed to follow uh, that, really? <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh. like, you know, uh, like you 
brought us the universe, and um, and I'm supposed to follow that. Um, but definitely in awe, definitely in awe um, of the the magnitude of what humans, what we humans are now capable of pondering and experiencing. And um, um, the it's funny that you, I didn't know what you were going to say during during your comments, um, but the one thing that I thought that would sum up my experience of the weekend at, um, in Craigville was that we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending. And we danced that in a circle and we had a, a, a way of choreographing that that Michael Mansfield led beautifully uh, so that we could have that experience of being in a circle that was um, moving in and out between and among an another circle. And that's the that's kind of the story. Um, uh, I came to North Carolina in 88 to work on a PhD in sociology and a guy named Peter Blau was on the faculty. He was one of the more well-known sociologists on the planet at the time for many years. And, uh, and his famous contribution to sociology was what he called concentric circles. And he said you could explain most uh, all human behavior by looking at the circles that people um, exist in. And um, so, so yeah, um, I think uh, the, what I would, what I would like to share a little bit today is, is some sort of um, an integration of all of these disparate ideas and, and the ways that connections um, sort of play out and how that can help us in our own personal lives. And so what I would kind of like to do is invite you to think about some challenge or issue that you're currently facing in your life, some, something that's going on with you, like literally these days, um, and, and think of that as, as I proceed here. And um, I think I'm going to do something new because this is a cool little um, uh, gathering here, a cool little circle of square grids. <laughs> Um, but uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to share with you all today and to be here and share for a few minutes. Um, and I think that I'll try something that I wasn't going to try when this meeting started. Um, and, um, and I hope that it, um, I hope that it touches you in some way. Um, so where we find ourselves in, in this life these days is in a lot of um, contrast and a lot of a lot of different kinds of experiences. We're we're having this um, kind of concomitant experiences of grace and amazement and joy um, that has already been uh, brought to us today, and we also have these experiences of horror and absolute just um, how could this be happening? Um, and and these experiences of that just don't that don't make sense and things that that don't um, comport with how we were brought up and what we learned coming up. And, 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 and we just can't make sense of it. And it just seems unmanageable, undealable completely. And then on the other hand, we have these ideas that Gail and, and Penny have been talking about, about the, the innate um, the innate goodness and, and the, that, that goodness is outweighing. There's just a little bit more goodness in the world than evil and that, that we're connected and that when things happen in one place, things happen in another. Um, and I just want to share some, uh, a few little ideas about that. And I love that you brought in Brian's quote about um, uh, that there isn't this outside force of gravity um, that it's the atoms themselves that create the phenomenon. And there's something really deep in that um, that, I would, that I would love to impart. And I know that it's not about convincing you of anything. It's about hopefully inspiring. So that's why I decided to go ahead and, and play the piano a little bit here. Um, but I met a guy years ago at a sound healing conference named John Stuart Reed. And we got to talking, and, and he, um, he had a device there that he called um, a cymoscope. And what I'd like to do is to show you a modern sort of a, a, a it, well, a, a version of a cymoscope that, um, that what it does is um, it, it makes visible the influence of sound in reality. 
Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to stop that. I need to make sure that you can hear it also. So let me come back here. And I think I need to click on something to make sure that you can hear it. Share the sound. Optimize the video clip. OK. So these are metal plates. And this guy has some, some sand and so on. And he's going to rub. Uh, raise your hand if you have seen something like these things before. It's called a Kolodny plate. Uh, it's like the microscope of sound. Wild. Pushes on it with one side and it changes. So this guy, this guy, John Stuart Reed, um, had, um, isn't that wild? <laughs> ha, raise your hand if that's the first time you've ever seen that thing. So um, this guy, um, John Stuart Reed, did research in the, temp in the um, pyramids at Giza, in the Great Pyramid, and he was given, he's British, and he was given clearance to do this research in the mausoleum where the where the actual crypt is and he spread a cloth over the um, the the crypt um, and and put a speaker in there and spread this cloth over and put sort of sand or some sort of um, grain on top and then turned on some tone into that speaker and it did the same thing. It created patterns on the cloth on the top of the mausoleum in the middle of the Great Pyramid. All right. And it formed the shape of Egyptian hieroglyphs. <laughs> and he said it completely blew him away. And he said the guards that had been standing there the whole time that had just been sitting there kind of bored watching this idiot Englishman do his whatever thing he's doing over there. When they saw that, <laughs> like everybody was like, what? And so he told me another story. He said he was going to be doing a talk that afternoon. This was like 06. And he s was going to do a talk that afternoon. And he said, this is the topic. I, I wasn't able to go because I was shooting video and I had to be in another uh, session. But he said, I, I realized something, and this is what the talk is going to be about. He said, you know, usually we think that sound is one molecule that bumps up against another molecule and so on and so on, and then it eventually comes up and, you know, hits our eardrum and then blah, 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 and neurons happen and we perceive sound. He said, that's not actually what happens. He said, it occurred to me that what actually happens, and this guy is in like an acoustical engineer, he said, what actually happens is, the, is that the electromagnetic field of one molecule bumps up against the electromagnetic field of another molecule. And so you have these electromagnetic fields bumping up against each other. And he said, we usually think that sound can't travel through a vacuum because there's no molecules. But he said, when these electromagnetic fields bump up against each other, there is radiation emitted. And he said, radiation can go through a vacuum. And so he said um, that one of the implications of this is that if you go out in your front yard and you sing a song to a star, he said, as long mm -hmm. as there isn't a planet or a satellite or something that gets in the way, he said, eventually a, a, a radioactive, a, radio, a radiation footprint an image of that song will eventually reach that star. <laughs> it's like, whoa. And he said, he said that sound isn't the only thing that generates this phenomenon. 
He said, our thoughts also generate energy that, pro that propagates via these kinds of fields. And that also emanates radiation, you know, at low levels, but, you know, radiation that, that goes out. And he said, when we think something, he said, our skulls are thick enough to stop that propagation. But he said, it comes out through our eyes, comes out through our ears, comes out through our mouth, comes out through our throat. He said, so whenever you think something, it is having, it's going out. <laughs> it's, it's having an effect. And as a quantitative statistician, I was a sociologist for quite a few years and a quantitative statistician. And so we were always looking for, me you know, what's measurable, you know, looking for things that you could measure and then you could put into a statistical formula and explain. And um, the point here is that we don't, we can't measure the impact that we're having. It's, l it's literally impossible. The complexity involved here is way, 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 way too complex for any kind of rational an analysis. It's way, I mean, you know, I've got, I've got my thoughts, but then there's however many, you know, 20 people or so, 25 people on here. You have all your thoughts. They're going out, and it's creating what looks to us like noise, right? It just like, it'd be like dropping 25 rocks in a, in a s small pond. Pretty soon it's just going to look like random noise. But the fact is that each of those pebbles has its own influence in that pattern, And that is unstoppable. And it continues. <laughs> and so we can't really measure and we can't say that such and so happened because of this person's thought over here. We can't ever probably really come to that conclusion and be able to prove it. But we know that that is happening. We can know that that is happening. Which to me is a fascinating um, encouragement to be really careful about what you say and be really thoughtful about what you do and to be really um, grateful <laughs> that you have the power to change stuff. Just that right there. It changes stuff. It just does. And so if we can allow ourselves to accept and behold our own miracle, <laughs> the miracle that we get to actually detect stuff around us and to be able to actually move and to be able to go from here to there and to be able to say stuff that you guys have the experience of kind of understanding, that's ludicrous. I mean, think about that from a, from a molecular standpoint. It's just ridiculous. So we have an incredible gift to just be able to perceive and to be able to move and to express ourselves. Uh, in ways that can br bring what's in our hearts and our souls and our dreams to reality, to manifestation, to matter. I think I'll stop there. Oh. Wow. Thank you, Daniel. That was fascinating. Mm. Um, hello everyone, I'm Imogene Drummond, a painter, filmmaker, and artist educator. And I'm going to share a little bit about my thoughts about the retreat and about my workshops. Um, so first I want to thank the entire gathering team for a remarkable retreat. I found it to be totally thought-provoking, uplifting, and inspiring. And the main thing I think the retreat created was a deeply shared sense of connection, individually and collectively. 
And for me, the content and process were deeply aligned. And that played a significant part in the weekend's success. Um, I found Penny's statement on Friday setting the content that our goal was to create an island of coherence, like she just explained, meshed beautifully with the process of cohesion wrought by all the elements coming together at the same high level, including the alluring landscape, the lush location, the ease and convenience of being together, and the small size of the gathering, which to me felt intimate. I felt all of that in, um, facilitated being inspired and making meaningful connections. Also for me, the unlocked doors literally facilitated the integration of trust at all levels. And trust was engendered in so many diverse ways. To be in an environment that was so trustworthy that we could keep our doors unlocked allowed me to feel an unusually deep integration of trust. And what a relief that was, especially it, it, as it's such a dramatic contrast to the dangerous world in which we live, given today's politics, alienation, and divisiveness. I think that integration of trust is something that we want to continue to be consciously facilitated. So now I'd like to share some information about my art workshops. First, I wanna thank CSC for inviting me to share them. I greatly enjoy doing so. And I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Patty for her amazing work getting the art materials, lending me her computer, organizing an excellent space for the workshop and all that she did to facilitate the workshop's success. So please give me a second while I share my screen. Okay, do you see it? Okay, great. Yes. Great, thank you. Um, so the art workshops that I gave on Saturday morning and afternoon were titled Cosmogenesis and Creativity. As the focus is on the process, not the product of paintings produced, I'll share some about the session itself. Um, I adapted a session from Art Sparks, my 12 week transformative art program for the workshops at the retreat. They focused on the theme of the emergence of the stars, moon, and sun, representing love, which aligned well with the retreat's theme of all of us being star stuff. We began by reflecting on Rumi's quote, we are stars wrapped in skin. The light you are seeking is within. Isn't that wonderful? In the workshops, I led participants along a path to stimulate their imaginations and help them experience their connection with the cosmos. Prior to creating artwork, participants viewed inspiring visuals, including an excerpt from my whimsical Divine Sparks film, and also engaged in guided meditations and discussions. After everyone introduced themselves, I gave a short PowerPoint to tune people into what cosmogenesis is and what I hoped they would get out of the workshop. I shared my goal to help participants experience that when they connect with their individual creative flow, they are tapping into the cosmic creativity that has transformed continually over almost 14 billion years and resulted in everything that exists today. I also clarified that participants are not only tapping into that cosmic creativity, but because they emerged from the cosmos, 
and are the cosmos. When they connect with their individual creative flow and create personal artwork, they are participating in that cosmic process that we call cosmogenesis or new sphere making. Isn't that exciting? After helping participants delve inward, I invited them to create art about what they love or what makes them feel alive and happy. I was delighted with the way they engaged intensely in the process. They then shared their creations. To me, their vibrant pieces manifested their joy and wonder. In participating in cosmogenesis, it fascinates me how expressing individual creativity strengthens empowerment and healing while simultaneously facilitating cosmogenesis. Following are some comments from the class. Your workshop helped me shift from being judgmental about artwork to seeing art making as participating in cosmogenesis. Creating art here opened up some possibilities for personal change. It was good to slow down and be creative. One person even came back and painted another piece between sessions. I felt like that was a great recommendation of how much she enjoyed the workshop. Now I'd like to, um, how do I get out of here? The red button, red button, stop share. Let's see. Um, Probably at the top of your screen, you'll see a red block that says stop share. Okay, here, it's on the other screen. That's what it is. Thank you. Great. <laughs> All right. Um, so now I'd like to share a video of some of Saturday night's magic of singing and dancing in the tabernacle, where we were doing um, circle dances and spiral dances, complete with artwork from the workshops, as well as luminescent animal lanterns that Mary had made. So look at the short video, Bob. Huh? Thank you. Thanks so much, Imogene. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you. Um, we we Thank want to share some of our responses to Saturday night because it was everything Imogene said and a bit more magic. Gail, you want to share your your experience? I it it was a ritual. Um, it had um, special moments in it, but it, there was this ease, this ease that we felt this whole weekend about people being with each other. Somehow maybe already found their islands of, uh, 
uh, coherence before they even came so that we were standing on the same ground, right? We, when, we, when we were uh, there together. And it was gentle and um, as you can see, lit in, uh, with lanterns. And I, I don't know if I'll just start this because I think one of the most moving things is we've gone through the four paths of creation spirituality by Saturday night and uh, different people were invited to write or bring a poem or, or sing a song or tell a story or um, stand still and let everybody else imagine, uh, do anything that they would like to for each one of the four paths. And so that evening, which I, I think Penny and uh, Michael Mansfield put together, that, that evening, uh, pardon me, boy, if I, I forgot, so because I know we don't have a Mary here, uh, Marianne and we have uh, Patty, I think, and, and Mel. So this was was the one of the beauties was that it was the whole weekend was a group effort. There wasn't a kind of like I'm telling you all what to do or you don't know more than me. There was definitely an equality there. And then when people shared their uh, their artwork or their their visions or their uh, their ideas, uh, it was it was just so moving, uh, tender. It, it was just. Uh, uh, and, and very few were perfect, whatever that is. They're, but they're so heartfelt. You could feel, um, you could feel uh, the creativity happening, and you could feel their, um, our, the community coming together, responding to each other. And that's that's something to talk. He was talking about the foam. I can get back to this um, with um, with Brian. He was talking about us coming out of the foam. And as I was working on this, I thought about how times we respond to each other. Sometimes we can feel the feelings, the positive feelings, kind of foaming out of our chest. It's the kind of burst out of, you know, and, and, and exude towards others. And uh, this, I think, is the foam continuing. And uh, from this, not so long ago, just, and uh, 14 million years. So I think that was happening too. And boy, that created us into us a, 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 a definitely a sense of a cherished community. For me, um, I was a little oblivious on what Gail was sharing about the four paths, but this is what stands out for me is people took very courageous steps that <laughs> night. Mm -hmm. um, there was a window of time where the four vias were put up and, and the offer was made. If you feel like sharing something tonight, whether it's your poetry, whether it's your singing, wh whatever it is, come, you know, come put your name up and then we'll integrate it into our evening together. And one story in particular stands out for me. One of our attendees, as a young person, had been told to stand in the back of the room when it was time to sing. And she carried that stamp of not okayness with her voice her entire life. I mean, she was an elder in the community, and she took the step to come forward and sing a song with Michael in front of us. And it was so deeply moving. I, I, um, when she told the story afterwards, just to me privately, you couldn't have known that this was as big a deal. She gave some announcement to it, but not quite as significant as it was. People brought forward um, their, their essence. And I think th linking it back to this idea of island of coherence and 100% creativity in the universe, it's linked. It's, it's that courage that this time calls of us to bring forth. And, um, and it was seeded, as Imogene said so well, by this trust that there we were, strangers, uh, some of us, friends, some of us, but we became an island of coherence. Um, maybe Mel and Lori would like to share their their response. And then Daniel, if you'd like to share. Thank you so much, Penny. It was it was a wonderful, wonderful weekend. 
and uh, Patty and I arrived there um, earlier on Thursday so that we could set up the inn and um, it, it, Diane made sure that everyone had a room in the inn so we were all together in the same building and, and our welcoming in that one room and we had a table and I was tickled to death to see all of the people over there making their uh, name tags, scissors, crayons, stickers, ribbons, everything was going on. That was the very beginning of the creativity and people went over there throughout the weekend to do that. And, and that was just like one of the easiest ways to get started. And um, there was so many wonderful things. And um, there, was, there was a particular woman that uh, shared her poem with me early on and so I asked her and she put her name on that list for Saturday night and shared it and that's the first time she'd ever done anything like that and she she was great and because the creation spirituality team on Sunday night because we were all there we presented our service for the month our first Sunday service and this was the first time ever that it wasn't just zoom we had a whole bunch of people in the room and so we had a live audience. So uh, when Patty led the body prayer, we did the We Are Circle thing. We all went around the room there too. something we've never done. It added another dimension to the first Sundays that was just fabulous. We've never had any uh, live participants with us as we did that. And that was just fabulous. And um, so there was so much that was so wonderful. And, and I had been working with a number of these people for three years online. And I finally got to see them in person. And that was just fabulous, just fabulous. So it, it was just a wonderful experience. And I'm so glad that I got to be part of it. And I'm so grateful for all the people that made that possible for me. And um, I'm going to help Patty next year. She's already waylaid me to help her. And um, I didn't mind, you know, by, by doing the registration table, I got to meet everybody as soon as they came in. And, and that was wonderful. And uh, I think I made some friends and uh, it was just a wonderful experience. So thank you all. Um, I really appreciate hearing all of your uh, responses to what, what went on there. I think one of the most touching moments for me was the last day. There were some people who stayed over. And there was a group of people that got up after breakfast. They formed a circle. And they were praying together. And you could see the effect of people coming together in kinship of ideas and intent and purpose. And Daniel mentioned uh, thoughts going out. Uh, hopefully there were a lot of creative healing um, effects that came from that. And I also felt, uh, I appreciated Penny's words, but I, I felt that that was an, a, a visual uh, statement about the people who helped to make it all possible, including people who've spoken today. Um, I felt it was really privileged to work with this group of people who um, experienced this uh, deep desire for this change in humanity that has been spoken about. Uh, so it was really a, a team effort of extraordinary talents which came together. And then the people came together. I was so excited about that because most of the people I did not know. And it was a wonderful experience to come together with people from a variety of backgrounds who are who themselves are very intent on eco spirituality, and um, so that was very uh, 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 positive. Also, another experience of the whole thing for me was that it, if we talk about um, some kind of positive experience coming out of chaos, the whole way in which the thing happened is kind of chaotic, <laughs> the whole process of playing it. <laughs> and it took a lot of trust and a lot of ability to do that. And I felt that it was a, it was a wonderful expression of, 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 of what this global kinship is all about. Um, and so those opportunities to come together face to face, I think are very helpful. Lori mentioned that about coming together with those people that she's been working with. 
Um, the I, I wanted to share before I went, I did some reading uh, in preparation, uh, including well, I've read Brian Swim's Cosmic Genesis, and of course, I've read a lot of math, and I read reread Mary Oliver. And then I found a book I'd recommend. It's called, um, um, oh, that's backwards, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's okay for it's okay for us actually. We can see it. Oh, is it? Oh, good. Yeah. It's, it's um, the title is Twelve Celtic Practices for Seeking the Sacred: The Soul's Slow Ripening. It's by Christine Painter, and it's a wonderful. All the time I was reading it. I felt like, oh my goodness, this is what we're going there to do. And there, uh, there's uh, uh, stories and uh, kind of thoughtful background. And then there are experiences for going out in our world and experiencing spirit speaking to us in a whole, whole variety of ways. And then on my way home, <laughs> this is kind of a personal indulgence. <laughs> I I have I have to get what, what I call my airline books. <laughs> and my airline book that I picked up in Boston was The Island of Missing Trees. It's by I can't pronounce it, but E L I F S H A K F A K. Um and it's a wonderful story. It's it's kind of sad in many ways, but it's so attuned to this natural world in which we're involved and 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 uh talking about many of the same things we were experiencing that weekend so it's it's interesting to me and the hopeful part to me is that these kinds of of explorations are going on in so many point, so many places because it says to me that uh, spirit is seeking to bubble up and seeking to bring us to this newest sphere. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, I, I am hopeful. And I think we have to continue to, uh, we have to continue to say what the issues are with the via negativa of our ecological disaster is. Um, and we need to uh, speak of the hopeful things that come. Sometimes I wonder if we can make the decisions that are necessary because we are so enmeshed in this consumer society. That's just become our story. And so it's wonderful to have these kinds of experiences in which we can come together and share the more basic story of who we are and to re-ignite that and, uh, and re-celebrate it. And I, Imogene, I loved your pictures and your uh, video. It was so touching to see the the expressions on the faces of people. So I'm still processing. Thanks, Mel. Someone uh, in the chat box asked for, to, to, if you might repeat the title of that last book. The Island of Missing Trees. Thank you. One of the figures is a fig tree. One of the main characters is a fig tree. <laughs> right. Uh, Daniel, did you want to comment on the how how it was for you Saturday night or on any other something that has come up? Um thank you. Um yeah, I just I thought it was fun and I I um um, I just thought it was fun, um, and and I, I enjoyed everybody everybody pitching in. It, to me, it seems it seems to me like this is the future of ritual, is is for all of us to come together and contribute. <laughs> and one of the things that I love about creation spirituality is that it 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 kind of says, in part, to me that that we're all you know we're all god is within all of us and so we don't need to wait for somebody to tell us what we are here to do <laughs> you know like we're like i'm the only one that can really know what i'm have to bring and and that's kind of i suspect it's kind of true of, of all of us and th so saturday night was this public display of that to me, one of the things about ritual is that we get to show up in 
some version of the, sa the same place and see each other and recognize that we're part of something bigger. You know, we're part of a community and we're part of thoughts that are more than I think and so on and so on. And, and, and so we get to the more that more people are contributing and adding their poem and singing their song and exhibiting their courage and stepping through their fear, then that, that lifts us all. And so that's kind of what I just got was just the enjoyment of, of playing with, with so many beautiful souls. And I, I, I guess one, you know, one thing that, that occurred to me that, that I had forgotten to sort of finish off earlier when I was talking is that I had invited all of you to think about something that is up for you now. And, and the, the option or the, the possibility, I think, that is there for each one of us in every single moment is that we get to pay attention to what um, the universe, spirit, whatever you want to call it, whatever life is showing in this current moment as if it is there for us as if it's there to support us and there to help us and to guide us and to give us clues and to, you know, <laughs> to say, hey, what about if you look at it this way and, and, and um, as a way of helping us to in whole and, and, and integrate aspects of ourselves that maybe we split off and that we can reintegrate and, and, uh, and experience and enjoy and um, so, to me, one of the implications of all this whole cosmic perspective is that we get to see that all of that is, is us. <laughs> it's not like we are a part of that. It's that that's who we are. Uh, and that, to me, is just profoundly hopeful um, because I have a lot of love that I want to offer, and so I get to offer it, and there's, that's all I got to do is that. <laughs> so I'll... So thanks, thanks to all of you for being in my universe. <laughs> thanks, Daniel. Um, I might open it just for a minute if, if uh, we've got a few minutes left here. Are there any other uh, general observations or questions of any of our speakers um, that someone would like to bring forward? Oh, Mary Ann. Mary Ann was very much a part of this. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Her hands on the board and has the labyrinth. Yeah. Can can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I just want to follow up. I I've just so enjoyed this was this was a better recap than what the board did. Um, whenever it was. Uh, when did this end? Sunday. So Sunday afternoon. That's the first thing we did. Was was debrief kind of. How was it? You know. Um, the whole thing to me, the whole weekend from checking in and before checking in, uh, for me, it was till the end of the board retreat was a ritual. And to me, it was, um, that's the way ritual is supposed to be. We listen a little, we listen to Brian and Matt and one another, but we weren't dead serious. In fact, we had a lot of fun, as Daniel said, singing and dancing. Oh, the harmony and just, oh, it was just wonderful. I saw people who were UCS graduates. Um, they, this was, to, to me, I thought they were coming back for a booster shot. You know, like they went, they went to UCS way back and then they went out and lived their lives and did their stuff and missed this and had forgotten they missed it. It's like, it's like when I first walked into an art museum as a very young person, I didn't realize what I was missing until I went there and I got filled up by it. You know, it's that kind of thing. And um, I also learned that the islands of coherence are already in, in existence. Yes, we made a very special one at the gathering, but the, the local folks from Cape Cod already had one going, you know, it's just, they're there. And I think we need to remember that they're there and get together with them and entice them and lure them to come get together with us. Um, anyway, and then um, Sunday morning, the little thing we did that I think is worth mentioning, because to me, that was a getting ready to go forth. 
which is via transformativa. We we did that lovely um, word cloud, you know, and yeah. and the yeah. words that came up, you know, gratitude, oneness, gathering with others, remembering and forgetting, connecting. I mean, I can go on and on. It was very exciting. I had no idea what to expect. I'd never been to a gathering before, you know. And uh, anyway, so um, yeah, that's that's probably what I would like to say, Marianne. Since you shared that word cloud, mm -hmm. can you can you tell people a little, just a little bit, and what its name is in case they're interested in that? Yeah, I can't remember, Carolyn. We all we see CSC has. We have access to it. If, um, have any of you made a word cloud before? It's like a real time. Um, you're you're asked a question, and and it's not a simple yes no question. And then it's, uh, for example, what what does I think your question? I think Penny was what what does this island of coherence mean to you? Like now at the end of the of the gathering. And we put in our words and they showed up. You, you had a QR code on your phone and you, you went uh, uh, and you added your word. And it's real time, like, wow, we're building this right now. You know, it was like, woo, service, one health, emergence, um, future, water is life, joy, hope, awaken now, allow, quiet, one. It's I don't know if I said what you, you wanted, Penny, but, <laughs> but actually the app name. Do you, do you I don't remember. It slides, it slides yeah. with it slides with friends. Okay, there you go. Thanks, Daniel. Yep, slides with friends, and you can just go to slideswith.com. But yeah, we have an account, and it's a pretty sweet little thing. You yeah, know, people around the it room is. are putting their answers in there, and it just pops. All the answers pop up on the screen. Fascinating. And the answers that have the most responses are bigger so it isn't just like a list it's they're kind of like floating cloud like and then the one that most people put in is the biggest one you know so you can and uh and you can watch that change as as people add in very 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 modern noah sphere stuff yeah <laughs> and we were together in the room but i really envision using this in zoom rooms you know in the future classes i all you need, participants need the QR code. They need their phone, you know? We got that, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, just to sum up a little bit why we're, why we're spending all this time on this particular topic, one is, you know, you wonder how does a live event play at post COVID. And this was a hybrid event, which I think we, we need to, to say that the way hybrid was done with this event is as most into is the most integrated I've ever seen it. So if you're involved in an organization that might want to take a step into doing something like this hybrid and in person can work. And um, our Shelley Walters on our board was our the host of that and did an amazing job in making people feel very much a part of the experience, including sharing their poetry at that event Saturday night. Um, so the post COVID in person is an important thing to remember because it it's we for, I've forgotten. I've forgotten how how strong being together is. I will say that um, the millennials have a term now for when you're in person with one another. It's called in the wild. So one way to think of this event is it was creation spirituality in the wild together. Um, are there comments or questions from anyone that might want to know specifics or or just want to reflect something back to us about something that's been shared? 
Casey? Yeah, thanks, Penny. I want to thank you all for your generosity in sharing with those of us who couldn't attend um, to get a taste of how wonderful it was. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for you doing this and excited for how wonderful it was and how it's continuing to ripple out. And I um, love the in the wild term you just mentioned, Penny. Thank you for that. I love that. Um, and I wondered how is it that we could possibly listen to um, Penny, your opening remarks or Brian or Matt's uh, remarks? Um, yeah, Brian and Matt's will be available somehow. I don't think we've talked through how we're going to make that available. Mel, do you know, or does anyone listening know how we're going to do that? We do have the well, report. I, I think Shelley was talking about YouTube, but I'm not sure. Okay, so so to be continued, but they will be available. They're just not out there yet. How about your remarks? I want to hear yours too. Um, no, they didn't. They weren't recorded. Oh, so. okay. Uh, Barbara. Barbara, Barbara has her hand up. Go ahead, Barbara. Hi, everyone. I I too want to echo what was just uh, said. I feel the enthusiasm and the energy and the positivity that everyone that shared um, experienced. And I too, I'm sorry I missed it, but I do look forward to the next one because I I believe that there is something to be said about being able to, to gather and as the human community, not just on a screen, is a nice way to exchange energy and energy that all seems to be so positive and life affirming. So thank you all for sharing. Thanks, Barbara. I want to add to that what what you said penny made so much sense because what i said about first sundays was that was the first time it was hybrid right. we we weren't just sitting in front of the screen talking to people somewhere else we also had people sitting there right there with us and dancing around the room with us so we had both and uh, so that was the first time and i did think about wow you know when i'm when i'm online we're all at home broadcasting i could invite people over and and have a hybrid so we'll we'll just see how that goes i i'd like to add something that i meant to meant to bring up before but it's, it seems to be ripe right now anyway which is that when um, neil Thais talks about us being hardly matter being uh, mostly a, a a collection of molecules that when we are together with other people, we slough off some of our molecules. They begin to kind of dance together and, and kind of exchange places. That's the something that it happens. So you think of it as more like pig pen, you know, in, in, uh, in Charlie Brown. He's got all that stuff flying around him and some, you know, flies over. It's not just the germs, actually, it's our molecules. And, um, and so this, I believe, is for us what happened there is, and any room uh, where people are doing this, this happens where we begin to share our, our ourselves, our substance with each other. And what happens in a, in a Zoom is you don't get to do that. And, uh, and in this situation and people who are um, connecting through the phone, but also lonely, part of the lonely is you aren't getting any enough of the, this um, information, enough of the stuff of somebody else with you. And, and it's really on a, you know, a subterranean level that uh, we make ourselves into families and communities and friends. Well, and one more comment that I would add uh, is that I was at a table with some really dynamic people, a couple of them, and I had just finished speaking with somebody who had just gotten back from the Serengeti and was telling me about the adventures there. And <clears throat> the two people I was sitting with, never in a million years would I have guessed they were both 81 and the woman that got back from the Serengeti was 85. So what I, what I took away is there is something that it, there's an aliveness that, that brought people to this event, but 
they came alive as well. You know, they were, they're living full, full, rich lives. And so for what that is worth, I plant that seed because I want to be like them. All right. Um, next next month, we are taking off. Uh, July will be a pause button for us, and we'll be back in August. If you know people that would be uh, great guests for us, please share. You know, we'd love to bring forward. We'd like to build our noosphere from among us, as well as, you know, we go we go out fishing, too. So however that might be, please consider um, sharing somebody that you think would be a great, make a great guest for global kinship. And Gail, you want to send us off with something or? Oh, sure. At first, I'm going to send you off with this that I believe you all get my uh, our mailing, but this is, I put it together. Um, and uh, in there, the next time it comes, please open it because it will have some probably some information about how to get to these um, videos of uh, Matt and Brian and uh, who our, our person is. Now, the 4th of July is the first Thursday of July. So, you know, that just doesn't work. And uh, and we think it's too much um, uh, jerking around to, to keep on changing and switching the dates. But this Saturday night, there is the Cosmic Vespers, which Penny, which is the team doing something. Uh, Penny and Bob and I and Mary Ann are all in involved in putting that together at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And um, it is a way to uh, contemplate and uh, to put into the spiritual realm or the nonverbal realm and the, um, what, what we learned so much, we take it from the scientists and all those ideas. It it's, um, gets us into a place of awe. And this is a chance for us to share awe together. And that's exactly the, um, the um, subject of the, the Saturday night. So if you've gotten something about that, Please open it up and then uh, respond. Um, do you want us to say anything more about that, Penny? Penny? Um, just to say that it has emerged, um, yes, it's 7 o'clock Eastern time, and it emerged out of cosmogenesis, but it's also this, this form that I think wants to come forward. And... The word that has come that I think suits it best is engaged contemplation. Uh, so if you feel like um, we are going to intentionally take five minutes of silence in community together, whether you want to meditate or make art or journal on content, whatever that five minutes is for, for you, that's what we want you to do. But then we'll come back in and work with emergent dialogue, which is this David Bohm idea of what is possible with human beings when they enter into a state of trust and calm together and what what might come to be. So uh, we're, I'm excited. Uh, I can't tell you, Gail and Marianne are going to open and close and both of their offerings will be amazing. So um yeah please join us in this adventure of being together uh okay. anyone else with a goodbye or daniel any sign off or and, and go out with um, mary with uh, imogene's pictures i think okay i'm gonna sing over that if, if only so everybody else um can mute because i'm gonna sing you can't sing at the same time as me so the words are we are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending. We are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending. We are a circle within a circle with no beginning and never ending. We are a circle within a circle, within a circle, within a circle, with no beginning and never ending. All right.
Thank you, Gail. And thank you all for being with us this evening, afternoon. And we'll see you Saturday or in August. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.